We are on the Columbia Rail Trail. We're riding a section of Canada's Great Trail between Castlegar and Christina Lake. We're beginning this ride in the town of Castlegar, in the lovely West Kootenay region of southern British Columbia. We're planning just to ride the section of the Columbia Rail Trail between Castlegar and Christina Lake, which is about 87 kilometres. This historic route is now part of Canada's Great Trail Network. We have our base set up in Pass Creek Campground in Castlegar. But before we start, we're going to do a vehicle shuttle to Christina Lake and leave our van there. It's late afternoon now and we're just getting ready to leave the campground. There are two young black bears hanging out on the edge of the campground. Christina Lake via the Columbia Rail Trail. This time last year when we crossed this bridge, it was really, really smoky from the wildfires. Beautiful and clear today. And it's about 5 p.m. and we're hoping to get in just maybe a couple of hours of riding today and find somewhere to camp. So now we're making our way from the campground, across the Columbia River, down Arrow Lakes Drive, past the Keenly Side Dam, and to the trailhead, which is just beyond the dam. As you can see, this section of the rail line is still active, as it serves the local timber mill. And there is a pulp and paper factory right along here. This connects in Castlegar with the main line, which connects with Nelson and Trail. Take a note of this truck and camper because we're going to find out later who owns it. Woohoo! We're on the real trail now. <sighs> Something I really appreciated about this trail was these large signs which we would continue to see at various points along the route. They show you where you are on a map and have historical background information and old photos. We've done 11 kilometres and that includes the section uh, on the paved road. The last time a train ran along here was in 1991. In 2000, Canadian Pacific Railways donated the abandoned track to the Government of British Columbia to use as a recreational trail. At this point we're 19 kilometres into the ride and we decide to stop and set up camp here. We're starting to lose the light now. We're at the McCormick Creek Bridge here and when measured from the Castlegar Railway Station, which is kilometre zero, we're 16.8 kilometres. 
Looking across Arrow Lake from this point, we are looking straight across at Syringa Provincial Park. So here we are at McCormick Creek and we have just had grilled chicken curry and now we're having our second course which is pad thai and Tannis is divvying it out there. Mm. And there are owls hooting and dogs barking from the campground over at Syringa across the lake. Otherwise, oh yeah, and a few cars going by because there are some private properties here. Otherwise, we are all alone. I think we ended up with the least amount, thank you. Oh, that should be okay. Frank has been foraging already this morning. We'll have these with our supper tonight. At the 21 and a half kilometer mark, we arrived at Shields, the site of a former passenger train flag stop and steam locomotive water stop. This was also an important camp during the railway's construction. Shields landing down at the lake below us was one of the supply points for steamers to bring supplies for railway construction and also the location for engineering offices for this whole Arrow Lakes grade. Horse-drawn wagons would haul the supplies up to the rail grade from the lake. Nowadays there's still a little community down at the lake shore here. There are both full-time residents and uh, recreational properties. The owners of these properties are allowed to drive their vehicles on this road and can access the locked gate at the Kesselgar end of the trail. Exciting, our first one, first tunnel. <laughs> I just found a, a railway spike on the, on the road here. Ara, ara. Ara, nice. 
We had a great chat with these two local men. They were very friendly. They were here just to get timber and they explained that you can only take timber that's already felled. You can't, you can't cut it down. Uh, it's crown land. They also told us that it is no longer possible to purchase property anywhere along Arrow Lakes here. And if you're lucky enough to own property here, you've probably had it handed down through your family or been lucky enough to uh, purchase it privately. Yeah, yeah. How is this like grade wise? It seems like you're always going uphill, right? It is, but it's very, it's very yeah. gentle. I believe this is our third tunnel so far. There is a total of five between Castlegar and Christina Lake. And there's one somewhere up ahead that's really long and dark. You can just imagine the workforce that would have been required to dig and blast away through here back in the late 1800s when this was built. Apparently, a lot of Italians were employed on the rail construction. And it was probably these Italians who built uh, stone ovens that you can still go and visit. So as you can see, this trail doesn't necessarily provide a tranquil ride in nature as you might expect. We've encountered ATVers and dirt bikers. No surprise to us though, we were prepared for this, we'd read about it beforehand. And we are riding on a weekend too, so chances are there's a lot more traffic than there would normally be on a weekday. At about the 29 kilometer mark, we reach a point called Koikendal, which used to be a station with a 63 car siding and a steam locomotive water tank. You can still see the little old shed that's built into the hill. There's a nice little picnic shelter here, so it was a great place to uh, sit and cook up some lunch. This section of the trail that we're on now, before the route takes a sharp turn to the south, way high above Arrow Lakes, definitely has some of the most amazing views we've seen so far. I'm just going to turn and look at the view behind because we're leaving the lake now. of the old rail. Kilometre 35 and 
Now we're starting to see the lake again. We're coming back towards Arrow Lake. We came upon this information sign about a town called Brooklyn. The actual site is off the trail down at the lake below, but this was the most important supply point for the rail construction at the time. And in its day, it was a booming place. In fact, it sounds fascinating. They say, and I quote, Brooklyn is a hot town and only a few of its inhabitants drink water. Now there are 10 hotels ready for business with five more building and nearly all lines of business are represented. About half dozen dwelling places have red curtains, unquote. But I think the best part of all are these round-bottomed beer bottles, designed this way to encourage consumption. A wagon road connected it up along Pup Creek to the rail grade, and regular steamboats connected it with supply points up and down the lake. But it suffered a very rapid demise within a year or two when construction moved on down the track and it was no longer needed. And it suffered a different fate in 1968 when half of what remained of the town was flooded by the construction of the Kingley Side Dam. We're getting ready to go into the long tunnel. This one we'll need our lights for. Do you have your lights on? This is Bulldog Tunnel, which is 912 meters long, and it has a sharp bend at the west end, meaning if you're traveling westward, you do not see the light at the end of the tunnel. So it's very dark in here. Drilling this tunnel was a massive project that started in 1898, and the first train went through in February of 1900. Prior to construction of this tunnel, trains had to negotiate a complicated series of switchbacks to get across Bulldog Mountain. And negotiating these was a one hour process. Just past the west end of the tunnel is what would have been Tunnel Station. And it's marked by a picnic shelter and information panel with some really interesting archival photographs and information. The grade on this whole trail has been very steady but gentle never more than 2.2%, and as you can see on this graphic, reading from right to left, it ranges between 1.3 and 2.2%, and the section that we're currently on is back to at 2.0% grade again. You've seen some of the motorized vehicles that we encounter today. We have also met uh, a few groups of bike packers, and one couple who were doing a day trip from the Christina Lake end. So we think we have about one kilometer left to get to the summit at Farron. And we hope to camp there as long as there's water. So we have reached the highest point on the Columbia and Western Rail Trail here at Farron at about 1220 meters. There's a convenient picnic shelter and so it seems like a good place to camp. And we're going to be joined by this couple, Wes and Leanne, who we met on the trail earlier today. They were doing a day trip and so they're going to ride back down to their vehicle parked um, farther down the trail and drive it back up here and camp with us.
We had a good time around the campfire last night with Wes and Leanne. We discovered that they were the owners of that truck and camper that we met when we were starting the trail outside of Castlegar. They had been doing a, a day ride from that end of the trail. And we were also very glad of the extra water that they gave us from their truck because we didn't find a water source here at Farron at all. Today there's not much left at Farron Station. Some old foundations can still be seen and there's a Canadian flag flying on a tall mast. This was the summit station and therefore the turning point for helper locomotives. And it's believed that the station was named after one of the railway construction engineers. Just south of Ferron is the site of a bizarre train explosion that took place in 1924, which killed Peter Verigin, who was the leader of the Dukabor sect in the area at the time, as well as eight others. This is believed to have been a targeted terrorist attack, but the perpetrator was never found. We should have an easy ride today down to Christina Lake to where our vehicle is parked. No more uphill. Here we go, we're off. We've just left Farron Summit. And this morning we're joined by Leanne from Salmon Arm, who's gonna ride this section with us. We had a great evening together with Leanne and her husband Wes last night around the fire. So we're looking forward to some downhill today. Just past 54 kilometers. This sign indicated that they were going to close the trail for maintenance the next day. Okay, good timing again. This is very scenic. Coriel. Coriel was another station location that seems to have had an interesting history.
Wow, it's right. Oh, yeah. Isn't that pretty Those nice? Hello. So we've passed what would have been the Fife Station and we are now at Fife Road where we're, we've met up with Wes and we only have a short distance left to ride to where we're going to finish the trail at the Santa Rosa Road trailhead. We're on the home stretch now as we ride above the town site of Christina Lake. It's been a great trail and big kudos to the organizations and volunteers who work on maintaining this trail because they've done a great job. This last section here actually has probably had the loosest gravel but overall conditions have been excellent. This marks the end of this ride. Here we bid farewell to our new friends and Frank and Thomas and I just have to roll down the hill on Santa Rosa Road into the village of Christina Lake to where our van is parked at the tourist office. <laughs>